It's the Hog's Die. Do it! Our guest today is a Super Bowl champ who's caught passes from everyone from Doug Williams to President Ronald Reagan. He had a storied career that spanned a decade and several NFL teams, but he might just be best known for his role in Super Bowls 22 and 26, where he set NFL records along the way to delivering the Burgundy and Gold to Lombardi trophies. It's a pleasure to have him here. Please give a warm welcome to the legend himself, Mr. Ricky Sanders. <laughs> welcome, welcome. Thank you hey. for being on the show, Ricky. Hey, it's good to be here. Good and, and you know, here. and you know, Ricky, you uh, you are live in the Hogstye Studios, Houston today. Uh, the right. guys are, are at our Hogstye headquarters <laughs> back in DC. All right. So thank you for joining us in oh, live no with problem. Us here today. Right. Um, where we'd like to get started it, with you, um, there are very few, very few people in the world who can say they played in and won Super Bowls. Right. And you know, as someone from you know, taken from me who was a bad high school football player and wishes I could be you. <laughs> I would. I, I think our audience would really love to hear from you what it was like to, in the first Super Bowl, 1988. What it, was it like to step on the field, playing the game, and win it? Tell us about your experience. Oh yeah. man, that was an experience that I. <clears throat> it was better than winning the lottery, <laughs> because I've mm. I've always been a uh, a fan. You know, growing up, I was a Dallas Cowboy fan, <clears throat> and I was a running back, and I used to love Tony Dorsett, and and then when the Redskins got uh, picked me up. I was like, uh, Cowboys, goodbye. <laughs> you know, but uh, <laughs> we'll forgive you for that. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Definitely. Um, well, what was uh, going into that Super Bowl a little bit? Uh, you know, we hear a lot about people saying how you come out in your first Super Bowl and you're nervous. Uh, play tight mm-hmm. is a phrase that was used a lot in the last, the most recent Super Bowl when it comes to the Panthers. Um, you guys right. lit it up in that, oh, in the very beginning of that game. What? What did you? What was done to kind of keep you guys calm to get you guys focused on the game so early? Do you do you remember, or was there any one particular <clears throat> thing? I really don't. Need, you know, <clears throat> excuse me. Starting out, you know, we uh, uh, got behind ten to mm-hmm. nothing, and uh, pretty much everybody in our mind we was like, "Oh, this is over," and all of a sudden. We were on offense, and Doug Williams called an audible to me, <clears throat> and I scored an 80-yard touchdown. Right, yeah. And from there it went on, you know, scored 35 points in one quarter. It's unreal. Mm-hmm. Is it, is it true to say that, that in comparison to a normal game, the Super Bowl, because of the circumstances, is just a little different, and it takes some time to work into it? Yeah, yeah. You mean you play in front of them, <clears throat> millions of people. Right. And, you know, it, it right. takes a while to get your motor going. And once we got started, it was just like – Going downhill, just rolling. You were know. there a number? Were there a t- play, players on that team who who had experience and who were able to calm the rest of the guys down a little bit? Who were the players that did that for you guys? Mostly uh, the leader, Doug Williams, calmed us down a lot. Uh, uh, Art Monk, mm-hmm. you know, we had a lot of guys on the defense side. Monty Coleman and all these guys said, "Hey, calm down." Daryl Green, you know, obviously he was one sure. that uh, really pumped the team up. You know, and. Uh, yeah. It, it was just a great feeling, man. That was a lifetime of hard work. I, I started in the seventh, sixth, and seventh grade playing football and, and always dreamed of being in the Super Bowl. And to actually be there, man, it was like – It must have been overwhelming. Oh, man, it was crazy. And I, and I was uh, didn't know I was going to start that game because Art had broke his foot and I came in and played like the last six games. And so we was in a, a, a meeting room at the Super Bowl, and, and Coach Gibbs says, Rick, you and Gary Clark are starting. This way. I'm like, you know, and Art could have played, but he, the two of us were starting. And I was like, <clears throat> all right. <laughs> you went from a kid in Temple, Texas, to starting in the yeah, Super Bowl. Did exactly. you ever think that that would actually happen to you? Man, I dreamed of it so much, man. And, and actually be out there and uh, break all those records that I broke, you know, and, and – and for those of you who don't know, and I'm, I'm ashamed if you guys don't know it out there, but uh, uh, Ricky had 193 yards in Super Bowl 22, mm-hmm. which was a record back then, and, and I, it may no, still no, stand no, today. Jerry, Jerry, Rice 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 Jerry Rice broke it? Yeah. yeah. Okay. And then I had That's good uh, company, the longest though. touchdown in the Super Bowl. That's 80 been yards. Uh, two touchdowns. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was just on and on and on. You put now, when you, in your childhood, <laughs> did you? Yeah, yeah. well, you did. Yeah. What, were were you one of these folks in in as a child who played a lot of sports? Did you focus just on football? Were you an all around athlete? I was all around. I played <clears throat> basketball, mm-hmm. baseball, softball, 
kickball, marbles, whatever. <laughs> ball ran was track, in. I assume. Ran uh, track. And I uh, went to state and track. I ran the hurdles. And I pole vaulted mm -hmm. over 15, uh, 14 feet in wow. high school. So I was pretty much, I'm, you know, ran the 100 meter, 110 meter hurdles. Okay, I got to ask. Yeah, so, you or Daryl Green in a race, both in your prime, who'd win? Oh, man. <laughs> Because Daryl says I, he beat Carl Lewis I'd once. I'd probably beat him if he gave me a five, so five yard. Hit, so <laughs> he was, he was that fast, him. huh? Yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> oh, you're no slouch, man. You nah, were fast. This guy, fast man, I saw him run a 4.1840. That's a legit 4.1840. Like 4, 4, and hey, I was lightning. like, I was running like a 4.3. And I was like, good. Which is burning <laughs> yeah. itself. Now, let me ask you in high school, were you running a 4.3 in high school, or did it improve with professional training and college training? I think it was a. Uh, as I went on into college and learned really how to work out and how to run, that's yeah. when it really exploded, you know. And then when you get into pros, you learn a lot more from different guys, you know. And, and I had good guys. Like I said, Daryl Green, Art Muck, Gary Clark, Ernest Byner. We all used to go out to George Mason University yeah. and work out, running the hills and running sprints. So Was that in the off season? Off season, yeah. So yeah. I had a good group of guys, man, that was just – like brothers. Well, let's talk about that a little bit because one of the things that all the Redskin fans and these guys are a little bit younger. Sean's you know, know twenty seven. Alex is in his early thirties. Right. Alex remembers a little bit mm -hmm. of it. Um, you know, but I'm the one who lived through this, and yeah. I can tell you from the fans' perspective, you know, what really we appreciated most. You know, it was a really tight knit group of people. Mm -hmm. It disappeared from us. We had the Hogs. Right. Oh yeah. You had the Fun Bunch, which is a little bit before your time. Yeah. You had the Posse, which you were a part of. Yeah. <laughs> how did that group form? Was it? How did the personalities meld in such a way that we didn't have? You know, like uh, Terrell Owens Terrell. and Ocho Cinco out there, yeah. you know, flashing around. How did that work? It, I, I guess it started from Joe Gibbs. You know, this guy, he, uh, he was just a great leader. And, and, and we didn't really argue a lot on our team. We had a lot of guys, a lot of spiritual guys, a lot of guys that uh, just wanted to win. Mm -hmm. We was unselfish, you know, especially with the posse. You know, if Art would catch eight balls one week and I catch two and Gary catch three, we don't get all upset. Next week, Gary catches ten, I catch eight. So it was a just a, a, a tight knit group, man. And, and, and even to this day, I'm still good friends with Gary and Art, and Doug, Mark Rippin. How often guys. do you see those guys? Not not as often as used to. I you know I go up I <clears throat> go to D.C. during the season, maybe three or four times, and I go in and then we'll do some charity work. We'll go build a park or something sure. at, a, uh, at a site, but. Uh, it's, I don't get to see them as much as I would like to. You keep up with them, though. Yeah, still. Yeah, yeah. Gary Clark, I, we talk quite a uh, bit. I go, I go to Mark Rippin's golf tournament. Yeah, can yeah, we can hear. Yeah. Uh, I have a kind of follow-up yeah. question. Was there ever a point? Uh, was there any kind of internal competition where you guys were kind of pushing each other to be better? Uh, speaking of the three of you, uh, mm. Clark and uh, Monk and yourself. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We were good friends, but we were always man. Uh, each week. It was competition. It's like, hey, Joe Gibbs got sick and tired of us. I'm like, I want the ball more. Now that he gets it, I'm ready. You know, so it's like, hey, if you're gonna you're gonna rush up, if you're gonna catch six balls for 200 yards, I'm gonna do better than that. You well, know, let me so ask just, you this about that. You know, the 83, 84 team was really running base, you know, yeah, back then, right. before your time, but that was Riggins, Riggins running and every on the 70 chip and all that stuff. And, and by the time we got to 91, it was an explosive team like yeah. anybody had ever seen. And that 87 team was kind of a mixture with Ernest Biner in there. Uh, yeah. Was there a – how did the transition from running team to explosive passing, passing team where team. we had Clark and Sanders out there, how did it happen? Did you know that was happening? Was it conscious? Well, <clears throat> what had happened, we uh, – Started out the season, we're trying to run the ball, and we wasn't really doing much. And uh, Joe Gibbs called us in the office, you know, Art and Gary and myself, and he said, hey, guys, from here on, we're going three wides, and we're going to just just throw it and put it down people's throat. <laughs> so from there, mm -hmm. it just, uh, just bloomed. Now, I'd like to go back to the Super Bowl. Um, you know, Doug Williams famously was the first African American quarterback mm -hmm. to win a Super Bowl. In the media and in the public, it was a really, really big deal. Understandably so. Yeah. Was that an issue that I mean, obviously you guys know he's clearly a black quarterback, mm -hmm. but was that an issue that the team itself rallied around, or did it affect your performance at all? Not really, because uh, you know Doug is a great guy, you know, and and, and it really wasn't anything. Uh, it was just we didn't care if it was black, white, yellow, green. As long, long as you, you wanted win. to compete and you wanted to win, you know, mm -hmm. there was no prejudice in our locker room, no uh, dissension, no nothing. We, we, 
I'm telling you, I enjoyed my time there. You know, eight years with those guys, and they like my brothers. Now, now, you know, Doug Williams replaced Jay Schrader mm-hmm. halfway through the season. Was that a quarterback controversy at all? A, a little bit, you know, that, that the fans in D.C., you know, when they get on one guy they, they, that they love, if, they, if you – Make a change. It's going to be uh, tough. We know <laughs> tough nothing the, about uh, that from recent players. history at all. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. obviously the fans clearly today are fighting over oh, Cousins versus man. Griffin. We hear, we, you know, on our website and podcast, we hear about it just yeah, nonstop. I don't, know what, I don't know what they're going to do with that situation, man. Uh, you know, I'd, I'd like to see RD3 <clears throat> stay there, but uh, and I'd like to see Cousins stay. But You, you, can't, have, you can't play with two quarterbacks this, at once. You, <laughs> Yeah, and neither yeah. one of them want to be a no. backup. So when you can't blame them for that. Yeah. No, now I'd like to ask you, Doc. We had Doc Walker on a few months ago, oh, and yeah. and Doc, one Doc's of the things, yeah, Doc's a great guy, and and it, we were grateful to have him on. Doc talked about how uh, the uh, one of the big rallying points uh, in in the first Super Bowl was that it was a seventy thousand dollar bonus. Mm-hmm. He said, you know, you know, Joe Theismann in the huddle said seventy thousand dollars. You know, that was back when we weren't making crazy money. Yeah. Was that still a factor in 87 and 91? Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, you <laughs> always look at going to the playoffs, and uh, salaries back then wasn't that much. They wasn't like they were now. So seventy-five, eighty thousand dollars $80,000 coming in your pocket mm-hmm. in one or two games, you're like, Whew, yes. <laughs> yeah, that, <laughs> that was a big deal. That was a now, huge deal. You know, when you went in at halftime, mm-hmm. you know, and the score is 35 to 10 in, in 88. Yeah. Did you guys – was the game over? I mean, how, what did you say at halftime to keep motivated and not let, not let them get back in it? I don't know. That's a good question. That's been so long. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I don't even know because it, it had blown our mind if we was up that much. So uh, pretty much we all – you know, like I said, Joe Gibbs and his staff knew how to calm us down and say, hey, it's still mm-hmm. another half to go. Right. So, you know, I have so, a question. You know, you, you, didn't want to do like Buffalo uh, did uh, Houston. Well, yeah, yeah let, right. let Houston come, yeah, let right. them come back. Yeah, let Buffalo that was come back around that same time too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I have a, I have sort of a follow up question to all of this. So it's about the seventy thousand dollar bonus, you know, that they were talking about. But also, you mentioned obviously contracts today are much bigger. Do you think oh. that that is at all? an impediment to gaining sort of that more team spirit that existed back then? Do you think the, the competition for the big, you know, bank-breaking contracts sort of takes away from a team team spirit kind of well, thing today? I think so. You know, because uh, when we were playing, you know, we had a few guys making millions, a million-dollar contracts and all that, but the way they got it now where guys are making $100 million contracts, it's like, wow. But I, I – I hope it's not a lot of uh, what would word be uh, confusion mm-hmm. between the teams, but uh, I, I really don't know how they how they function you know, with that right. kind of money that coming kind of in. That money coming in that and the fans seem like the fans nowadays are more into the. Uh, the players with wearing the jerseys. And well, shoes. I can tell you, I've got a 14 year old, and I can tell you, the kid, you know, all these kids today really are focused on the players. Oh, yeah, he yeah, almost doesn't yeah. have a favorite team. You no. know, I, you know, I've bought him Redskins stuff, right. but he, you know, he likes Odell Beckham. You know, because all the right. kids do. Uh, you know, we, we I asked the same question to Joe Jacoby, and Joe wouldn't say it. So mm-hmm. I want to see if you say it. <laughs> the '91 team, 485 points scored in the season. You were 14 and two at the end of the year. The, the last loss was a meaningless loss, you yeah, know, at the end Cowboy. of the year. There were some guys you know didn't play mm-hmm. in that game, if I recall. Um, some critics say that that 91 team is one of the greatest teams ever. What's your opinion about the 91 team's place in history? I would, get, I would put it uh, pretty high. That was, we had a <clears> – that was a great team. Uh, I would place it up there on the top of the list because uh, – mm-hmm. Was that the best team you ever played with in terms of in ability terms to of score? In ability and, yeah. and, and offense, a defensive and special team-wise combined, probably one of the best uh, teams I ever played on. You know, in 80, mm-hmm. 87, we had a great group of guys. But something about that 91 season, that was just – it was unreal. You know, we came back and won a lot of games. You know, we wasn't always leading every game, but we came back and would pull out some right. big games. But uh, – 
I'd like Great to see the 91 team play that 2007 Patriots team that <laughs> with Randy Moss, and I think that'd be a great game. You know, yeah. everybody yeah. in their prime. I don't know about today. You guys, <laughs> that would be it. <laughs> might be a little rough game today. Well, yeah. I, I wanted to, to talk about the 91 team. For me, uh, just my age, that's the first Super Bowl I really yeah. remember watching as a kid all the way through, and I remember, mm-hmm. you know, most of it pretty well, considering, you know, it was 1991 and I was seven or eight years old at the time. Mm-hmm. But, um, the thing that amazed me was just how, in that Super Bowl, Mark Rippin just threw deep pass after beat deep pass, and you guys kept on – you caught everything, mm-hmm. it seems like, every yeah. ball uh, <laughs> yeah. thrown at you. What was – how different was uh, Rippin versus Williams and Schrader? Like, how different was it with any of them in the huddle? Did you guys – like, do you even notice a difference? Or was the team just so fluid in your time there and so – uh, well run by Gibbs that, you know, mm-hmm. it didn't matter who was back there. <clears throat> well, Alex, you know, uh, it really didn't matter who was back there. But when, you know, Mark Rippon is a smart, smart, smart uh, mm-hmm. quarterback. Had a great arm. He can read defenses. excellent. And uh, he just had a uh, – uh, he brought in <clears throat> a spirit of, of – of, of, toughness he wasn't real vocal yelling and all that but we you could just see the competition in his eyes he wanted to mm-hmm. compete and you know he threw one of the uh a beautiful spiral and deep ball man you know to catch his yeah. balls were real easy. really and it was it was very easy to catch it and i uh, imagine you as a constant deep threat guy to begin with you know having that power yeah, arm was I, probably I, pretty I, nice too <laughs> oh i used to love it man and uh I, I was blessed to have some great quarterbacks, man. You know, who was your favorite to play with? If, if you can, if you have a in terms of not personality, who you like best, but who would you like to play with best? Because you played with Jim Kelly too, uh, didn't you? In the USFL. Throwing Jim Kelly in the yeah. USFL. Jim Kelly, yeah. I mean, whew, wow. Did you did you play you, with anyone the best? Any work better with any of those guys and the others? In the USFL, with with uh, <clears throat> Jim, we played well. I mean, he he's a good quarterback. Uh, Smart guy. He was one of probably one of the toughest. You know, uh, uh, rah, rah, let's go get him. Let's you know knock him out. A rah, but, rah uh, guy. Okay. Yeah, yeah. He was more of a yeah. Pump the team up. Let's do it. Let's go. But do, uh, do you talk to Jim at all? Yeah, he's been I, through a rough time health wise yeah. recently. Have you heard from him at all? Mm. I talked to him. Uh, when was it? It's been a while. Uh, I talked to a lot of his friends. Uh, uh, hmm. Fitzpatrick, he played with us at, with the uh, yeah, cameras. Yeah, And Scott Boucher, he talked to him. So uh, <clears throat> I haven't talked to him as much as I should. Um, let's talk about the USFL since since we brought it up. You know, the USFL back then obviously was the competition mm-hmm. in the NFL in certain respects. Um, mm-hmm. Number one, how would you end up in the USFL versus <laughs> the NFL? And, and two, uh, follow on to that, what is the difference from a football perspective between the USFL, USFL. and the NFL? Ooh. Well, I, <clears throat> I played my – College ball at Southwest Texas right, or right. Texas State. Texas State back then, which is now Southwest, Southwest Texas, for those of the uninitiated who yeah. aren't in Texas. And uh, the end of my junior year, they had – that's when the uh, USFL started. Mm-hmm. And uh, I was actually drafted to the uh, San Antonio Gunslingers, and they traded me down here to right. Houston. Mm-hmm. And from there – uh, I left and went. Well, they had a supplemental draft. They had the supplemental USFL yeah, draft. I went in the first round in New England, and they had just drafted two receivers. I think Fryer and some Irving else. Fryer. And they uh, the talent <coughs> in that league just still like as somebody who doesn't really remember it because I was just too young. It blows my uh-huh. mind when you read off all the names of people who were in the USFL. Oh man, this was crazy. Well, just I mean, just your team alone, just <laughs> it yeah, was pretty yeah. incredible. You know, just having you and Jim Kelly by itself. Yeah, we was, had Clarence Verdan, uh, Gerald McNeil. He was with Cleveland. Richard mm-hmm. Johnson, a uh, whole bunch. I mean, it's like, you know, and, and you had Reggie White that was in the USFL. Kelvin yeah. Bryant, uh, Doug Flutie, Herschel Walker. You can just go. Boom, boom, oh, there's Steve a lot Young, of da, da, there's so. a lot of talent. Uh, well, it, well, can you name one corner that you thought was the best you ever played against? No, not on the Redskins. I would mm-hmm. imagine you'd probably say Daryl Green in practice. But Correct. other than Daryl Green. I, I, I think one of the smartest and uh, DBs was probably uh, Everson Walls. Everson Walls mm-hmm. with the Cowboys. Yeah. I mean, this guy, man, he had long arms. 
his speed wasn't that bad, but he always had the right position. He knew how to position himself and used it out of ba- out of bounds as a mm-hmm. you know as a as a, as another defender. But did you have a you know you were you were known as the the deep ball guy, but you could run some other patterns and stuff too. Oh, yeah. Was the nine route your favorite, or did you have a favorite route? You know, my favorite route was a seven route. It's a uh, deep corner route. Okay. You you fake like you're going to post and then hit, you know, and then that, that ball's coming over your shoulder here. You can dive for it or you can one hand. Oh, man. Because we <laughs> saw you do that many times. Yeah, that was one of my favorite. And then after that, we had an eight route that was a post, and it's a deep post right into the middle of the uh, goal post, and they just throw it up and you nice. go get it. Those, so, that was your favorite? Yeah. I, 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 I played a lot of positions because I played all mm-hmm. three. You were a receiver, slot at one point. You, you played the X a little bit. You played the Z. Yeah, and I love being in the slot and then running those eight routes through between the two defenders. But it was just fun to, <laughs> to be out there. Now, now you meant you were at the White House twice. Mm-hmm. President Reagan first time, George Bush the second time. The first time uh, in, in 88, there was an iconic moment mm, Yeah, <laughs> where Ronald Reagan actually threw you a pass. Yeah. Where's Ricky Sanders? <laughs> yeah. That's, that's a big part of history, and it's a part of your legacy. Yeah, it is. What can you tell us about that day and visiting in the White House and getting it a pass? It was the pass a little low. It looks oh, a little it, low to me when I watched the replay. <laughs> Alex is criticizing yeah, the 80-year-old man throwing a football. <laughs> it's okay. Hey, at least it wasn't over, uh, <laughs> head over heel. Yeah, yeah, he got, a, got, a, he got a ball, too, yeah. <laughs> but it came about, you know, uh, we, we after we won the Super Bowl, they invited us there. We were in, uh, the, you know, they have different rooms, like a gold room. And right, right. Gold, silver. And, this, and a good friend of mine, Clarence Verdan, he played with us, and he played with Indianapolis Colts. Uh, we're in there, and we were just talking. And he said, man, oh, look at all this. Stuff. And Joe Gibbs came in because <clears throat> they were, had everybody out in the back lawn, and they were calling mm-hmm. each player out. And uh, Joe Gibbs came to me, and he said, hey, Rick, it was about five minutes before he called my name. Hey, Rick, what are we going to do? I want you to do something. Uh, uh, President Reagan's going to call your name. He gonna, and when he call your name, you come out. You, I'm gonna, you're going to be the last one. You come out. He's going to throw you the ball and catch it. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you have to yeah, drop and it. catch it. <laughs> <laughs> and then when you get to catching it, go over it and – Tell the president a uh, happy birthday. It was his birthday that day, so I gave him the balls. So that was set birthday. up then. So you knew it was gonna. It was. But gonna it was happen. like five minutes before we did. We did. Were like, you nervous? Ball. You were gonna drop the ball. Up here, I have street clothes yeah. on. You know, <laughs> sliding across the lawn. Probably would have brought. Yeah. Now, now you met George. Known, I'm guessing. Uh, <laughs> yeah. You probably would have brought cleats, maybe in yeah, yeah. gloves. <laughs> you know, speaking of that. This isn't on our agenda, but I'm, I'm curious. You know, today's players, they have gloves mm-hmm. that are, you know, really, really, really sticky. Yeah. And, tech, and uh, you know, I, you yeah. know, like L- mm-hmm. Lester Hayes back in the 70s used with to just be stuff. dripping with, with stick em. Yeah. What Was the equipment back in the day a lot different than it is today in for we, a wide, wide receiver? We had those gloves, but they weren't as tack, you know, and right. all that. It, it, uh, you could catch the ball, but now they got stuff, man. As as it hit your hand. It's well, so I'm kind of wondering because you see some of these balls out there, though. Dell Beckham's. He did it. He one, did. Right. Have, I don't know if you saw the Giant game this year. Oh, he caught, he one, caught one laid out against yeah, us. He, I'm wondering if the gloves have a big something to do with it. I yeah. I, I, I couldn't tell. You. I I've never met the guy. At the hands will have to be huge when they catch mm-hmm. the ball. But, but I, <clears throat> I I don't know. I couldn't 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 speak on that one. Fair enough. Well, yeah. <laughs> it was uh, just curious. Um. Well, tell, tell us about Joe Gibbs. I mean, I know you, you, mm-hmm. you talked about what a motivator he is, and he's written a lot of books, mm-hmm. you know, um, you know, uh, about his faith and whatnot. Right. Every player we've talked to raves about Joe Gibbs. What was it that yeah. was so special about the guy? It was just uh, he was an honest guy. That, I mean, <clears throat> in everything he would do, he was just honest about it. He, he'd tell you exactly what he wanted, and uh, he lived his faith out mm-hmm. every day. On the field and off the field, but I, it, but it seems like he was, he lived his faith out. But he was he was not a guy who was trying to force it. On no, people. no, no, never. I mean, I, I used to go to Wednesday every Wednesday. We'd have a Bible study, and I would be in there with him, and he'd come in with the guys, you know, and and, and sit and do the Bible study with us. So he wasn't trying to push nothing out anybody's anybody. But he lived his life in accordance with his own principles, which yeah. I think anybody yeah. can admire. Yeah. Tell tell us a little bit about Jack Kent Cook. How much interaction did you have with Mr. Cook? 
he used to come into uh, training camp every year, and uh, all the guys, Gary, always uh, uh, joke about it because we were out there one <clears throat> in training camp, practice, starting warm up, throwing passes, you know, going on passing drill, and Coach, uh, I mean, uh, Mr. Cook said, Ricky, come here, you know, like, uh, <laughs> what he, and he he would call me over there, and he'd have somebody besides him. I remember one time he had. Oliver North, he's like, hey, Ricky, I want you to meet Oliver North. You know, all this, I'm like, uh, yeah. Wait a minute, hold on a minute, wait a minute. (laughs) Wait a minute. So you're telling me that Jack Kent Cook introduced you to Oliver North. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's just, that is incredible. Did did he bring a lot of, like, a string of celebrities through there? Oh, yeah. I remember, I think it was Mel Gibson came through. Uh, Well, it was a, he would always bring people through there, man, and it was like, wow. (laughs) <laughs> you, you don't think wow, of that's, uh, Jack Kent Cook hanging out with that, celebrities like Mel Gibson, though. I mean, you know, you just don't think of him doing that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, connection. But he, huh. yeah. Well, he did. Now, now you were you were named as one of the seventy greatest Redskins. Mm-hmm. Um, that was ten years ago, uh, twelve years ago now. Uh-huh. Now you went out to to DC for for that event, if I recall. Yep. <laughs> Tell us about that day. How much does that mean to you? <laughs> Oh man, it was great uh, to be in the company with those guys. It was I'm sorry, <clears throat> just to be in the company with the <clears throat> the other guys. You know, the other 69 guys that were there. It was it was thrilling. Mm-hmm. It was it was great for uh, my family, my kids, and everybody. You know, uh, I, it, it was just, it was a great honor just to be back and and and, and get some recognition for the things we've done there. Well, I, you know, and, and I think on behalf of the fans everywhere, you know, we all we very much appreciate so. what you guys did, and we wish we could replicate it, you oh, know, again yeah. today. I, I, I hope we can get back on track, man, because I I'm here in Texas, and they beat me up every year. <laughs> but you know what, these Texas well, well, see, Cowboys fortunately, we, we, for 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 the listeners out there, we're in Ricky and I are in Houston, and it's and it's more of a uh, it's more of a Texans oh, yeah. battleground, I think, than it is a cowboy. You know, area. Thing, yeah. Well, my, my wife's um, family's from Houston. I, now, I know all about how the Texans fans hate the Cowboys oh, yeah. almost as much as we do at times. <laughs> it's kind of a one-sided hatred, though. Yeah, I think I'm not it. sure the Cowboys fans, Cowboys really care yeah, about maybe Houston not. one way or another. Um, <laughs> do, do you? Do you? You said you go out to D.C. A, a few times a year. Do you have an, a, some sort of official relationship, alumni type relationship with the team now, where you're doing team events for them? Yeah, yeah. I use, like I said, we usually go down and out every year. We'll go to. Her. <clears throat> to a community and we'll build, you know, build a park, you know, slides and different uh, uh, trails for them to run around. And we just spend a whole day out there and it just clean up a park. Has there been a difference together. since Bruce Allen came on board in terms of the, the team's relationship with the alumni versus the prior administration, or did it make a difference? Uh, I didn't really make no. this. Didn't make a bit. I'm, 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 didn't make a bit of difference. Huh? We always hear that he, <laughs> well, he wanted to get alumni more involved, so we were just kind of, we've always been curious about that. Yeah, he he would. I think he he was the one that brought a lot of the uh, older guys back into the mm-hmm. uh, loop. Now you know, getting back. Well, and it's good to hear, you know, because mm-hmm. we the yeah. fans yeah. love to see the, the the older, you know, the retired players out yeah. there again. Yeah, you Definitely. know, we love. He them. always tried to instill, uh, uh, you know, as getting back in with the hogs and all the older sure. players. So. It's um, our greatest era. And, and yeah. I always like to point out he brought back the old now, uniforms with the golden pants, so I I, I like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was real nice. <laughs> well, you know, there's a big controversy in the fan base about the pants, yeah. believe it or not. But personally, I love the gold pants. Yeah, but I, I think I'm an anachronism. What do you guys think about changing the name? Well, oh, I, we did a whole show did. on that, actually. It, oh, did? And I think it's safe to say that uh, the, the three of us and Robbie were all vehemently against the, the name change. How do you feel about the name change issue? I think it's, it's, I think it should stay. You know, I, I think it's... A lot of uh, <clears throat> the native Indians, they, they don't, they, nobody's complaining about this, but I guess people in the league. Are well, yeah, you that. know, nobody's trying to offend anybody. I, mm-hmm. You know, we look at it as an honor more, more so than yeah. anything. And, and I think we can add your, your vo- you know, your voice to, to the chorus of people who want the name to change, and we certainly yeah. hope that the Redskins, mm-hmm. you know, stick with it. Yeah. But, um, mm-hmm. One thing I wanted to, to ask you about, uh, you know, there was a movie Concussion mm-hmm. recently where do- uh, where the doctor, uh, you know, from from out in Pittsburgh, um, discovered CTE. Mm-hmm. Um, 
And so the question has come up in in fan circles and you know parents of you know high schoolers and whatnot is is would they let their kids play football, knowing what we know? Hmm. You have kids. Yeah. If, if your kids want to play football, is that an issue for you? Ah, hmm. <laughs> uh, it was really it wasn't a problem. I have a son who played, you know, and he uh, he didn't make it. Yet, you know, before he played college ball, but. Uh, I, I don't know. <laughs> that's a tough, I that's mean, a tough, tough question. Get, yeah. It is. About, I mean, I, I assume you – are you part of the lawsuit? I, I guess we should ask that first, uh, the big concussion lawsuit that uh, got yeah, involved. Think, are you sorry. a part of the lawsuit, the concussion lawsuits? Yeah. You are. I believe. Yeah, because, um, you know, there's more – there's a whole bunch of them out there that's mm-hmm. going yeah. on. Yeah. yeah. Okay, now, I, 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 there's a person close to you who – who told me years ago that after the 91 Super Bowl, you went back to your room and went to sleep instead of going to party. Is that the truth? <laughs> That's the truth. <laughs> That's, That's a level-headed man right actually. there. Yeah, you did that for – because, you know, today, you know, you, you see these guys out in the, out club, the club, you know, win or lose. Yeah, I you know, Out in the club partying. So you went – that wasn't you. Yeah, not, I – I think I'm with you. I think I'd probably would have done the oh, same yeah. thing. You know, I didn't even really know they was having a party. I would – I was so tired. I went to the room. You know, well, I don't know how people do it, honestly. You know, you go, you play the Super Bowl. How do you yeah. stay up till four in the morning after that? I know it. It's like, man. Well, what, guys, what about your first <laughs> Super Bowl? Did you go out for that one? I mean, because the, the first one's a big deal. Yeah, so, I, I, we went out. I, yeah, yeah. They uh, they gave us uh, a couple limos, and I took my family out to eat. We went out. Uh, it was in San Diego, so we went out to the ocean. There was a uh, ocean uh, mm. restaurant. <clears throat> and we just had something to eat, and then came on back. And I think that's when they went to the party, and I went to the room, and <laughs> I, was, I love sleep. <laughs> How sleep many days coming. were you – did you go back to D.C. the next day? Uh, I think we ate wait, a couple of days. Oh, a couple of days. <laughs> well, Give him a couple good. days to relax before yeah, he gets back to A couple days in San Diego doesn't yeah, sound too bad. <laughs> Not at no, all. No, not at all. Well, listen, Ricky, I think we've kept you longer, and I said we kept oh, you, and, and no we problem. really appreciate appreciate you uh, taking your time to come talk to us. We know the fans will, uh, you know, out there, the our audience will certainly love to hear from you. You know, they yeah, all love it. One thing I want to say to the fans, hopefully they can vote me into the uh, ring of fame. Well, that's the next thing. Uh, yeah, so there you we, go. You know, we're, we, we might just start a campaign yeah, for we, that, we too. Have a, all right, we do have – right, let's 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 I, I think Redskins PR – cool Lisa. graphic for Ricky to get in the ring. There you go. Uh, that's, got, yeah, right. that's got a good run <laughs> <to> that, too. <laughs> When we had Joe Jacoby go. on, you know, we talked about his, his candidacy for the Hall of Fame, and mm-hmm. we had a campaign to get Joe into the Hall of Fame. Yeah. It's, right. a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a shame, man, with our teams, e- the, 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 the 87 and mm-hmm. the 91. It, they, they don't get the respect they deserve. Get the respect I mean, we deserve, you know. And, if you and, think and, about uh, it, you were part of really what is probably one of the great dynasties of that decade, and only, oh, yeah. what is it, three, four guys now are in the Hall of Fame from that whole era? That's absurd. Yeah. It's underrepresented, yeah. In that area, yeah. Yeah. Well, it is underrepresented. Yeah. Well, we certainly think you deserve to be in the in the ring of fame, and I'm mm-hmm. sure we're sure the Redskins will, will do that soon. One final question. Mm-hmm. If a certain law firm out there may ask you to play Flau and its flag <laughs> football team again, would you be willing? Yeah. <laughs> you remember this? Yeah. <laughs> Oh, I don't know, man. I still run a little bit. I jog, but I'm not. Uh, see, I have a feeling when I'm, you say you don't run, uh, that's at your level. Oh, I right. think your jogging and your slow is probably would smoke me any day of the week. Be my guess. I don't know, man. And what I, I remember I could, about that, Ricky, was oh, that when I pulled was, my groin. Well, what I remember about that is that uh, you know we wanted you to play, mm-hmm. and we went to the league and said, "Listen, we know we're a lawyer team, yeah, but we've got this guy who played in the Super Bowl who we'd like to play." And they went, "Uh, okay." Lawyers, rec league, flag football, 193 yards in the Super Bowl. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I think that's what happened. Steve, Steve get him to so coach. We might have to try that you, again. You guys so probably think he's a good coach. Yeah, because yeah, right. yeah, we, we should have done that because, we, you know, we needed a coach desperately on those, on those teams. <laughs> All right. Well, listen, Ricky, well, thanks for Alex much. Mayer's nice talk It was very nice, to, uh, very nice to talk to you and to meet you, sir. All right, man. Yeah. All right. God All bless right. you, my friend. Thanks Take very care. much.